Well, hey there, Internet people, and welcome back to Green Wing Gaming. It's another Friday, which means it's time for another Let's Play. And today we are continuing our journey through Rangers of Shadow Deep. We are starting the third and final uh, core rulebook mission, which is called Descent into Darkness. The entire premise behind this mission is that uh, our Ranger is finally being sent on the very first expedition into the Shadow Deep. So up until now, we've been following Tywin and his merry band, just kind of responding to emergencies on home turf, you know, as they come. And now we are finally going, I wouldn't say necessarily on the offensive, but on a scouting mission into the Shadow Deep, trying to figure out what happened in our neighboring kingdom after it got swallowed up. We need to get some idea of what actually lurks beyond this giant shadow. So I'm sure that could only possibly go well, yes, because if you watch Stranger Things, going into the Upside Down totally went okay for everybody involved. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's the mission we're going to be playing today. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, and I'm hoping you guys have been enjoying the gameplay so far. If you've watched this far, I really do appreciate it. Uh, but, yeah, the only real change of note about the party is that I finally got the third spell for, for my caster, Archibald. Uh, I At the end of the last video, if you guys didn't watch it, at the end of the last video, uh, one of the uh, characters in, in Tywin's party... The, uh, we got we got the resources to be able to give him a third spell. He he's been having two spell slots up until now. He finally got a third, and we decided to go with a spell called Burning Light, which is maybe not the most effective because a quick rundown of it. It basically just says that at some point he tosses out a ball of light, and everything within six, every undead creature within like I think six inches of it potentially takes damage. You know, it only works against undead, so if I'm not fighting zombies, I'm kind of boned. Uh, the spell doesn't do anything. But the model is literally built with a torch in his hand, so it just everything so far about him is very light-oriented, and I figured I'd continue with the theme. Because if you weren't here for the very first Rangers Let's Play, first of all, you should absolutely go back and watch the other uh, playthroughs. Uh, they're a lot of fun. Or at least I thought they were a lot of fun. Uh, and if you're watching cl clear through to episode, I guess this would be episode six at this point. Yeah, episode six is what would be. Uh, why would you jump in at episode six? Go back watch the other five episodes. It's a, I'm definitely not doing that because it would, it would up my engagement levels. No, not at all. Why would you even say that? Uh, but yeah, so he he's finally got. But if you didn't watch that first episode, I made it pretty clear that. Rangers of Shadow Deep is a game that you should really be playing thematically or with a narrative in mind. Because if you want to break the system, you absolutely can. So could I have given Archibald a more uh, effective spell that was going to be useful all the time? Sure, I could have done that. But that's not really... It's not the gentlemanly way to play this game, and, and that's what we're going for here. But other than that, uh, before we get too far into any, anything, I would like to remind you guys that I am just getting started out on YouTube. This would only, this is only maybe the twelfth video I filmed for the channel, so we, we're still pretty fresh. And at this point, any level of engagement from an audience really helps me out. So you've already done me a huge favor by clicking on the video, but I'm hoping that you kind, generous, and dare I say attractive strangers on the internet might do me another favor and consider liking, maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff like this. We have uh, gameplay uploads every Friday, hobby discussion videos every Monday. And so I would love to hear from you guys in the comments below. Maybe hear your thoughts on Rangers. Uh, if, have you been, have you played the game? Has these videos made you want to play the game? I would love to, to hear a little bit more, more from, from you guys. Uh, but other than that, we're playing the first scenario of Mission 3. So let's just get into it. All right, here we are having at the start of mission number three, The Descent into Darkness. It's going to read this quick intro for you guys. While the battle against the Shadow Deep rages along the line of, of the old Beacon Towers, you and your companions have made a huge discovery. Scouting the area behind Torvarden, you found a long, deep fissure that runs down into the gloom of the Shadow Deep. 
Within this fissure is a rough and broken stairway. It seems too purposeful to be a natural occurrence, yet its rough surface and uneven sloping steps argue against it being made by the hands of man. Reporting your findings to your superiors, you quickly receive new orders. You are to lead your team down the stairs and penetrate as far as you can into the Shadow Deep. You will be the first warriors of Alador to enter the Cursed Realm, and any intelligence you can bring back will be of huge importance. Take any opportunity to strike against the enemy, but your goal is reconnaissance. So, apparently, rescuing the Tower of Torvarden was not enough for High Command. They, they need a little bit more of us. Ain't that always the way. <laughs> but we're all set up for running the very first scenario of the mission, which is called Scenario 1, The Broken Stairs. Laden with provisions for who knows if there is e food or even drinkable water below, you start the treacherous descent of the stairs. In some places you, can, you move quickly, in others you must step lightly, checking your footing with each movement, as cracked and broken rocks crumble away. As you get lower, the air thickens and breathing becomes difficult. Black ash floats in the breeze, filling your nostrils and stinging your eyes. You are just about to call for a break when you hear a loud buzzing noise. First from one direction, then from another. You ready your weapons just as the first bloated body comes into view. So we're descending down this treacherous pass into the depths of the Shadow Deep, sort of uh, crossing into the Upside Down. And uh, we've been ambushed by these strange bloated flies, more horrible monsters of the Shadow Deep. Now, I've already read through the setup of this scenario. It's played on a two and a half foot by two and a half foot table, so that's 30 inches by 30 inches. And uh, the whole thing is, is meant to simulate being on kind of a 60 degree angle, a very steep drop. Now we're going to be navigating, now if you consult the map, we're going to be navigating kind of a three to four inch wide corridor that winds back and forth across the table from one side to the other. We start on one side, we get to the other. Uh, along the way there are going to be three, three obstacles that are basically generating enemies. Giant flies are going to be coming flying out of these obstacles. Uh, and we and it is our job to strike them down. Although crucially, killing these enemies is not required for the mission. We just need to get across the table. Now the mission takes ten turns. We draw an event card at the end of every turn. Uh, we get bonus experience for for destroying these these fly holes. All we have to do is uh, one of my models needs to end in base contact and spend one of it, one of its activations setting that that uh, fly hole on fire. There's a little treasure marker just off the path that we can get to. And oddly enough, we're actually all set up for, for the scenario. We've already got some terrain set up here in a four inch wide kind of winding corridor that leads us across the table. Uh, we have our heroes starting here, all within six inches of the starting edge of the table. And we've got our enemies. Now, the scenario calls for these enemies to be giant flies, but oddly enough, I don't own any. And I didn't feel a particularly strong need to buy them just for this one scenario. Uh, back, if, if you guys have been watching the other Rangers games, uh, we used these Tyranid Hormagons from 40k as stand-ins for spiders in the second episode. And I figured it just work, they work just as well to simulate for flies. So my friend Evan painted these up for me. So Evan, if you're watching, you did a great job on the paint scheme. Uh, but other than that, uh, right here we're using this as a simulated, you know, kind of cave for some of the flies to come out of. This is just a Skaven gnaw hole from Age of Sigmar. Uh, over here we're using just a random piece of terrain I got off of Etsy. It's kind of like a... a an abandoned ruin that, that more of these monsters are coming flying off of, and here we just have a random hill that I found on Etsy uh, that's going to be serving as, a, as our third source of enemies. And uh, the t the mat we're using is just a it's a double sided mat from Table War. You can find them on TableWar.com. This one is double sided, but they sell single sided, double sided. They sell in a variety of sizes. Um, the other side of this one is actually the one I used in my previous two videos for the kind of stone floor of Torvarden. So we've actually been using this mat for a couple weeks at this point. And uh, yeah, we've got all of our buddies over here. There's a couple, there are a couple rules to bear in mind for this, for this scenario. Uh, the first being, because we are descending, technically supposed to be descending down like a really steep cliff, 
Whenever my heroes make a, their first movement action, they can move normally. But if they try to make a second movement action, which the rules do allow, you, you after that action is completed, you have to make a climb check. And I believe it's a target number 12. Uh, which, considering most of these guys do not have any training in the climb skill, I'm guessing most of them are just not going to be attempting a second move. I am not suicidal. Because if you fail, however much you fail by is how many inches you fall. Now, you, that does take you that many inches closer to the other end of the table, which is our goal. But you also take that much damage to your health, ignoring your armor. So... Uh, you would be slowly, slowly killing yourself as you go across. Now, as I said, you, we can destroy these sources of flies because right now we've only got three on the table, but more will be coming, which is not the best news ever. So we can try to destroy them, have to end in base contact with them, but crucially, they all lay beyond the bounds of the corridor. So if we step beyond the corridor, every movement that's taken beyond that you, su you suffer half movement, so you, it can be done, but you could potentially be, put, be making your, your trip across this passage a lot longer. So Now, crucially, that, that movement penalty about like having to make a climb check only applies if you're not able to fly. So as usual, our buddy Thaddeus is at a massive advantage over his friends, but <laughs> we also don't want him going too far off by himself. But anyways, that is the setup for the scenario, and rather than starting a whole new clip, I think we're just going to go ahead and jump in to turn number one. So we're going to go into the ranger phase, and we're going to be group activating. I think we're going to group activate with... Oh, I think we'll be doing it with Thaddeus and Lady Gwyneth. So it's going to be... Our ranger, our rogue, and our crow. So it's hard to know what what the right move here is because none of these guys, you know, they've all got this big wall between them and the fly. So we're gonna we don't really have great line of sight, so we can't really be making any ranged attacks, which kind of sucks. It means we have to move, which is gonna make our ranged attacks harder. But Tywin is just gonna move his seven inches. Up to about there. Uh, our buddy boy Thaddeus is going to keep him company. Gwyneth is going to do much the same. So that's all their first actions done. And uh, Gwyneth and Tywin both have throwing knives, but they are both out of range. And I don't particularly feel like placing them any closer. We're, so yeah, we're just going to use them to be to be rushing forward. Uh, and that's gonna, that's probably gonna be it, because Thaddeus can move again without taking any risks, but I don't particularly feel like having him run off by himself. So, yeah, that's gonna be our ranger phase done. So we're hopping over to the creature phase, where these little critters have a movement of nine inches, which does get this buddy into contact with Gwyneth. Tywin's going to snap in to, get, to at least give her some combat bonus. It's going to be, I believe these flies are fight plus one, so it's going to be dice even since she has the gang up bonus. So let's see how this goes. Oh dear. Uh, that ain't good. So Gwyneth has taken a natural 20, so that becomes a 21, minus her armor of 11. She goes down. So... Uh, she's going to take a minor in, she's going to be taking a minor injury after the scenario, but that doesn't bode well that literally the first roll of the game, one of our characters is down and out. This might not go well, guys. Uh, but yeah, so Tywin is now by himself in combat with that first fly, and the second one is just gonna come forward, moving about nine inches to there, and then moving another four and a half to about here, so not quite making it to our heroes. And then, let's see, so it's 13 and a half inches. This last fly is gonna do much the same and just barely make it into the passageway. So, that get, takes us through the creature phase and we're not off to a great start. 
But we're gonna have, oh, we're gonna have, get into our companion phase. And we're gonna have Damien try to be a brave boy. He's gonna move three inches up to here, then another inch and a half, because remember, any steps he takes beyond this, this uh, passageway, he suffers half movement. So he's not gonna be able to burn that, that hole this turn, but I'm gonna take a risk. Let me just make sure I've got the rule for this climbing deal right. Uh, oh, the climb rule is actually only a target number eight, so that's a lot easier than I thought. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and have Damien take a second move action to get, just to try and get in base contact with this gnaw hole. First he has to make a climb check, so he's looking for an eight, and he cranks it with a 17. Yeah, Damien don't mind climbing over some, some uh, treacherous cliffs. Uh, but with that being said, that is Damien's activation done. We're going to have Archie m get ready to go. He's actually going to start... Mm, how are we going to do this? We're going to start with, with Archie firing off a magic bolt spell. Now, he's going to fire it at this fly over there. It's going to be a shoot plus five to the fly's fight, fight of plus one. Okay, so we've got a 13 against a 7, so that becomes an 18. I'm fairly certain that kills the fly, but I'm going to have to come right back. I need to take a look at their stats. Give me one second. Okay, so I just came back from checking their stats. This creature over here, uh, these giant flies that we're using for, for the scenario, they have an armor of 6 and a health of 5. Now, Archie here, come on camera, focus... Archie here rolled a 13, so that on its own would already be enough to kill it, even without the plus 5 from the spell. So that is our first dead fly. However, in checking their stats, these flies are actually fight plus 0, which means against Gwyneth, she only suffered a 20, uh, which she has 10 wounds and 11 armor. So she's actually still alive <laughs> with one wound. Now, she only has the one wound, so she's not exactly doing super hot. Mm, come on, camera focus. There we go. So yeah, that is Gwyneth still in action, still fighting the good fight. And Archie here has expended his first action, removing uh, the first threat of the game. Sorry, the camera seems to be having a little trouble focusing today, guys. Uh, but today, we after after sending off his magic bolt, uh, Thaddeus, or not Thaddeus, Archibald is just going to move his six inches up and get into base contact with this fly over here that is trying to basically tear out the chest of Gwyneth. Uh, but next up is Bryn, who is going to try to mimic Archie's success, and he's going to try to take a shot at this fly over here. So he's going to have a shoot of plus two two to a fight of plus zero. So let's see if he can actually be useful this game. <clears throat> and Bryn's streak of being the least valuable member of this team continues. He exactly equals the fly, the, the fly's uh, uh, armor. So, oh wait, no, ties do deal damage in this game. So, yeah, okay, so he has a total of seven to the fly seven, so it's a tie, so the fly does end up taking damage which means we apply an extra two damage, that becomes a nine, so our buddy boy the fly ends up taking three points of damage and is on two health left. So, congratulations, Bryn, you managed to avoid being completely useless. Seriously, why do we keep you around? But with that all being said, we have finished the first turn. We go over to the event phase. Now, for those of you, if this is your first time watching a Rangers game, Rangers of Shadow Deep game, uh... The way this turn structure works is we've already done the ranger phase, then we did the creature phase, then the companions phase, and now we come to the event phase where we flip a card and we've got a red two. We come over to the book, we consult the tome, a red two. Place one giant fly on each of the three fly holes. Fantastic. So we killed one, struggled to kill a second one, and there's three more on the way. Fantastic. So we put the one we killed right back here. We grab another lucky, lucky fly and put him right there next to Damien. That's not great news. 
And then we place another one over here in the ruins. Alrighty, so that does bring us to the end of our first turn. Give you oh, this camera really does not want to give you. The, sorry for for the camera being a little out of focus there, guys. Give you a, a quick sweep of the board. We've got uh, oh, sorry. We got, we do have to let him make his move. So he's gonna move his seven inches and just try to. Uh, do I want to do that? Yeah, we're going to go ahead and have him move up, because he's certainly not doing us any favors with his gun. Uh, but yeah, so that's our heroes moving up the table. Damien in position to potentially get rid of this fly hole going forward, and that brings us to the end. I will see you guys at the top of the next turn. And here we are at the start of turn two, giving you guys a quick sweep of what the board's looking like. We got a big jumbled up combat over here. It's not, uh, I'm not going to say it's looking bad, but I've definitely, I'm definitely not feeling super confident here. We got Damien over here on getting, looking to get rid of this uh, fly hole, but unfortunately he's going to get jumped on by this fly before he can do this. We'll just have to see how he does. But in the ranger phase, well, that's how we begin every turn with the ranger phase, we're going to be activating with Tywin here. And uh, he's actually going to activate with... Bryn, for reasons that defy understanding, and he's probably going to also activate with... Oh, I'm hesitant to activate with Gwyneth in case she completely biffs it, but we're gonna... Yeah, we're going to activate with, with Bryn and Gwyneth. Bryn's first action is going to be to reload his crossbow, or his musket, as it were. It's that... Oddly enough, whenever I'm filming Brent, Brent, filming Brent, I can never quite get a good angle on his musket to really give you guys a look at, at it. So, just for, for funsies, we're just going to give you guys a quick look at this mini. Because he's not performing very well, but he's a cool mini. And I'm very proud of the paint job I did on him. So, yeah, that you can see his little musket with a, with a stake under it. This is actually from the Cursed City box. Really love that mini. But anyways, his first action is going to be to reload. And when you group activate with a ranger, everyone has to do their first action before anyone can do their second action. So, Bren has to reload his musket. Uh, Tywin is going to take a swing at this fly engaging Gwyneth. Because I really don't want her to be ending up in combat. Because she clearly isn't very good at it. So, Tywin is a fight of plus four. He currently has a double gang up bonus, so he's going to be fight plus six to the flies plus zero. We'll see if those odds are enough. Okay, uh, Tywin rolls a 20 to the flies eight. Even with that, like, this kind of goes without saying, guys, but even without the gang up bonus, that is a massively dead fly. So that brings us to two dead flies. So we have successfully gotten Gwyneth out of danger, so she is going to use her first act activation to throw her throwing knife at the incoming wounded fly. See if we can't at least try to clear out these baddies before they make moves on us. So she's going to be a shoot of plus one to the fly's fight of plus zero. Let's see how this works out. Okay, this actually does not work. This is actually not half bad. So Gwyneth has rolled a 13, becomes a 15, or sorry, becomes a 14 with her shoot of plus one. The fly just gets a six, so that's actually going to be enough to kill it, because it only has an armor of six, so anything above an eight kills it. Uh, again, if you guys are new to this game, and some of this is kind of going over your head, uh, you whatever your final score counting your modifiers is, you know, you roll your d20, you add your modifiers, if your roll is higher than the monster's roll, uh, you win, and then whatever you rolled, it becomes your damage, some people are going to have damage modifiers, like for example, Bryn here has a, it's a musket, but rules-wise, it's counting as a crossbow, uh, which gives him plus two damage if he, if he wins the roll off. Uh, then you subtract whatever the enemy's armor is from the damage you did, and whatever's left over, you take out of their health. So, just a quick reminder for how that works for those of you that maybe maybe this is your first game, although I would heavily recommend going back to watch the previous games. But regardless, Gwyneth has 
uh, used up her only throwing knife, killing that fly. And that brings us to the end of our of our first actions for everybody. So we get to start get moving down the board again, which is unexpected. I did not think it, that's how it was going to go. So Bryn here is just going to head on down his seven inches. This is going to get him to about there. We're actually making surprisingly good progress. Tywin's going to do much the same, leading from the front. Kind of getting up right there next to Bryn. And then we're going to have Gwyneth. Oh, we're actually going to have Gwyneth play things somewhat safe. She's got a 7-inch move, so she could keep up with these guys, but she's going to tuck in behind these guys. Not because she's a woman, but because she's literally almost dead. Seems like as good as any to seek shelter as any that I could think of. But with that being said, that is all of our activated heroes in the ranger phase. Because Tywin can only activate two. And then uh, that brings us to the creature phase. Which unfortunately means Damien is about to get jumped on by this fly. Fly jumps forward. Now Damien is a man at arms. So he is fight plus three to the fly's fight plus zero. So come on, bud. Oh dear. Well, it, okay, it's not, it's not as bad as all that. So... Damien has rolled a 3, becomes a 6. He does lose the fight, but the fly only rolled a 9, which would be 9 damage, except Damien has an armor of 12, so he's fine. He takes no damage. Uh, and the fly did one action to move, one action to fight, so that's the fly's turn. Unfortunately, there's two more of them, so our day is just beginning. Uh, and unfortunately for Tywin, nine, a 9 inch move from the fly is going to get into base contact with him in just one move. And its second move is going to be to attack it. I'm not going to... I could have Gwyneth snap into combat, but she is on one wound and she, she would technically become the target of the fly. I don't want to risk her dying, so we are going to... Just roll it up, because Tywin's fight plus four. He's going to be fine. He's a big, brawny hero. He can handle himself. Ah, see? We're fine. We're golden. Tywin cranks out a 15. Man, Tywin is going hot. He rolled a natural 20, then a 15. So he rolls a total of 19 to the fly's five. So that is an exploded fly. That is our third fatality of the day. Or no, sorry. That is our fourth fatality of the day, because we are actually kind of cleaning house here. Uh, and then that brings us to the th last remaining fly, who is going to have a 9-inch move, which won't quite get him there. In fact, even 13 and a half doesn't get this fly, fly there. So this fly is just going to buzz buzz over here, right into the crosshairs of our entire party. I don't think he thought this through. Uh, but after that, we come to the companion phase. Now, unfortunately, uh, our buddy here... Only, his spells are only one use per scenario, so he can't magic bolt again. He has fireball, and he has burning a spell, a new spell called burning light, which I told you guys about in the intro. But burning light will have no effect on these things because they're not undead, and fireball would affect even his allies. So I don't particularly feel like wasting it on a single bloat fly. So we're just gonna have Archibald move six inches up the table, and. That's kind of going to just kind of be his role. And then Thaddeus is just going to move up next to his buddy boy Tywin. They're just going to hang out. Because Thaddeus' role is mostly as a scout and to just to be someone to group activate with Tywin and give him some uh, gang up bonus. Now, over here, we still have to do... Uh, that, you know, Thaddeus could move a bit further and take a second action without penalty, but we want to keep him near Tywin and Archibald. I'm just not willing to risk him... Well, yeah, no, we're not going to risk him potentially falling down this cliffside. He, he's a frail old man. So now it just comes down to activating Damien. So he's fight plus three against the fight plus zero of the fly. Let's see if he can do a little better this time. And he does. Okay, he rolled a 15 to the fly's two. So that is another dead fly because 15, again, becomes 18 because of his fight plus three modifier. And uh, the fly, again, anything at 11 or better kills a fly. So that becomes our fourth fatality of the... Whoa, actually, hold on. I think we've killed five so far, yeah. We've killed the original three and two of the second duos, or the second trio. So Damien's first action was to kill that fly. His second one is to just set this hole on fire. 
uh, and I will mark that up in a second. But that brings us to the end of the companion phase. He's going to have a little bit of uh, trouble getting across the, t the table now because he's stuck in some rough terrain, but I'm sure he can handle himself. But we've come to the event phase, which is going to be the Red Six. So we come over here to the book. I've decided to move the book over to the table so I'm not constantly jarring you guys with the constant whipping back and forth. So we place a giant fly on holes one and two. Fortunately, hole number one is already destroyed. Damien literally just did that, and the rules stipulate a hole that is destroyed cannot generate more flies, even if the card calls for it. So... We are still going to get a new fly over here on hole number two, but not on hole number one. So good job, bud. But with that all being said, we have just reached the end of turn two. Uh, things looking a little bit better. I was I was not uh, optimistic at the end of our last turn, but hopefully we can keep this going. And I will see you guys at the start of the next turn. And here we are at the start of turn three. Looking at where we've got this smoke rising from this first burning smoke hole. Again, good job, Damien. Coming over to here where we've got two more baddies look at, looking to start some trouble. But all in all, I'm feeling a little more optimistic here. So we're going to hop right into the ranger phase. Where Tywin is going to group activate with Thaddeus and Bryn. Is that what he's going to do? No, actually he's going to activate with... Thaddeus and Archie. Thaddeus is going to take his first action, move into base contact with our bad guy. Tywin is going to do, take his first action to do much the same. And then uh, Archibald, oddly enough, Archie is going to let fly with his fireball spell right at that fly hole. Now, there's nothing in the rules saying that fire the fireball spell will destroy that that fly hole, but again, as I said in the intro, this is a game really designed around narratives, and narratively, I think it makes sense that if Archie puts a fireball on that fly hole, that should really destroy the fly hole. So that's what's going to happen. Archie's going to let off, let fly with his, with his fireball spell into that fly hole. It's going to be, for fireball, for whatever reason, it only counts as a plus three shooting attack, where Magic Bolt was a plus five shooting attack, but oh well. It's still plenty powerful against the, that fly's uh, shoot of plus nothing. So let's see how this works out. Oh dear! Oh no! <laughs> um, yeah, the fly has cranked a natural 20 to Archie's 13. Uh, the fly is unharmed. We are still going to count the fly hole as burning. But oh no, that fly is, is alive and well and going to be coming right at Archie come, come the creature phase. So that's not great news. But over here, we're going to have Tywin take his second action, and he's going to swing on the fly he is currently in combat with. So he's got Thaddeus backing him up for a plus one bonus, so he's fight plus five right now. Oh no, he actually loses that combat with a total of nine. And I just don't think it's worth... He's not going to take any damage from it, so I just don't think it's worth him potentially you know, like him using up his he has a once per game special ability to reroll a dice but i don't think it's worth it here and thaddeus oh what the hell thaddeus is a brave crow he's gonna try this as well come on buddy uh okay 16 to 16 uh i'm sorry about that i knocked the dice over so that's gonna be a 16 to 16 where is it where are you at this is the problem with D20s. It's impossible to find the, what you rolled. So here we go. 16 to 16. Uh, but Thaddeus is getting a plus one. So that is actually a victory for Thaddeus with his 17 to 16 just barely missing out. Which it's a good thing he, he rolled as, exactly as good as he did. Had he lost that, Thaddeus only has an armor of 14 and a health of one. So if he had lost, he'd be dead right now. So that is one more dead Giant fly, bringing our tally to six. Uh, so all in all, could have been worse. We got rid of one of the baddies, uh, even if Tywin didn't manage it. But that brings us into the creature phase, where this fly is just going to be headed straight for Archibald. And there's not a whole hell of a lot I can do about it, and he, the fly does have the movement to get there in one go, so it's going to be Archie's flight fight of plus one 
Or no, sorry, Archie has a fight of plus zero. He's a caster. He doesn't do fighting. He doesn't do melee. So he has a fight of plus zero. So it's going to be dice even. Just ah, who can roll better? Okay, and so in this wet noodle slap fight of fight plus zero to fight plus zero, uh, Archie has somehow cranked out a victory. He rolled himself a 17. He just insta-splats this fly. The fly comes blazing out of the burning hole looking for vengeance, and Archie, being the grumpy old man he is, just sticks out his torch and says, well, feel the burn again. <laughs> Burns the fly, fly to death. Awesome, guys. We are doing great. <laughs> Okay, so that gets us through, that actually gets us completely through the creature phase. It brings us to the companion phase, where we're just going to come over here to Damien, who's going to move uh, his three inches for his first movement over here. And just so he can try to start getting back, catching back up, he's going to have another three inch movement. Because uh, when you make a second movement, you have your normal movement. So his normal movement is six. It was halved over here for the for the rough terrain, and it's halved again here for moving a second time. So he's just going to move up like that. But he now has to make a climbing check of eight. He has no skill in climbing. But he cranks it on a 19. Wow, you guys are rolling so hot today. Uh, these guys are totally going to die in the next scenario. <laughs> Oh, well, <laughs> I'm using way too much of my good luck in this in this game. So, real quick, we're just going to activate Bryn. He's going to move four inches up there, and then another three inches just out of the edge of this. He's going to try and go for this treasure token over here. Uh, but uh, other than that, that's going to be his activation, because that seven-inch move... Was his move for the... I don't want to risk him falling, because that could make getting to the treasure really difficult. Uh, so yeah, he's just going to stick there for a turn. Gwyneth is probably going to hang out doing the same thing. Uh, actually, no, she'll just... Now that that fly hole is burning and there's no enemy coming that way, she's going to move right up here next to the guys. Being sure to take her wound marker with her. But that being said, that is the companion phase done. This turn flew by, what with all the enemies dying. We are making good progress. We're about halfway up the board with two out of three enemy sources removed. And then we come to the event phase, or the scary shit-o-meter. We flip the, the red nine. So what does that do us? That, oh god, we put... Two more giant flies on hole number three. The one hole we haven't dealt with yet, of course. So, we've got two more flies showing up right at the edge. They are looking right at Bryn, though. I don't like his odds. He's about, oh, actually, yeah, they're both going to be able to get into him uh, in their double action. So, he's actually in a little bit of trouble. Because he's not close enough to Tywin to group activate. But, oh well. That brings us to the end of this turn. I will see you guys at the start of the next turn. All right, here we are at turn four of a possible 10. The party is looking in pretty good shape. We've got Damien bringing up the rear for following his successful burning of that hole. We now have uh, the second fly hole smoked up and burning. Uh... Archie over here is in kind of a weird spot that he's used up all his useful spells. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, but with that being said, oh, I do not like the idea of leaving Bryn to fend for himself against these two flies. He's basically useless. So we're going to group activate with Tywin and Thaddeus. Tywin is just going to kind of, with his movement, he's going to be able to kind of pop through like that, try to absorb the blow. So Gwyneth and Thaddeus are just going to make a break for it. Thaddeus has a total of a 13 and a half inch move, so he's just gonna make a long bomb go for it. He's just gonna fly over like that, and because he's, as I said at the beginning, because he is a crow, he flies, he doesn't have to worry about making climbing checks. He's just trying to beat feet out of here. Gwyneth, on the other hand, has no such luxury. Having only one wound left, I cannot afford for her to fail at all. So she's just gonna make her way downtown. One move action at a time. And uh, she's going to have to burn her second action because I can't afford to risk her dying. Uh, and Tywin... 
again, he's not got nothing he can really do, so that gets ranger phase done. Uh, going right into creature phase, nine inches does not quite get our fly into Tywin, but it moves, and then it moves. This fly moves, and then it moves. So both of our, uh, our ranger and our tracker are both engaged by the enemy. Uh, that is the end of the creature phase, so we're just going to have Archie move up real quick, moving up six, and actually we're just going to have him move the full nine and see if he can't pass his his climb check. I know I said I wasn't going to be doing much of that, but we really need to be getting out of here. I don't want to deal with too many more of these baddies. So how does, does he pass his target? It, yes, again, cranks it on a 17. Man, that is three... I, think three for three might or uh, i might be misremembering uh, we've passed all of our strength check our climbing checks so far and uh damien here looking to push his luck is gonna do the same thing he's just gonna come up his nine inches like that and see if he can't pass his climbing check he does on a 10 guys stop using all my luck you're gonna get yourselves killed in the next scenario <laughs> but oh well and then the only thing left to do is Bryn who is, you know, he cannot make a shooting attack being engaged in melee, but he's going to make a melee attack. He's fight plus one against the flies fight plus zero, so he might do okay here. In fact, he does. He rolls a 12 to the flies seven. Uh, even with, uh, so his 12 becomes a 13. Now, his weapon in close combat is a staff, which actually does minus one damage, uh, two enemies it has a negative one damage modifier, but also negates one level of damage that he takes. But even with his negative damage modifier, that's still a total of 12, which is one more than he needed to kill the fly. So that's about that. Oddly enough, Bryn actually did a thing right. So he is now completely unengaged and is going to move into base contact with that treasure. Uh, that brings us to the end of our turn. Again, very fast turns on this one. I think this battle report is going to be a little shorter than the others. But we come to the event phase again, and we've flipped over to reveal the Red Queen. Ooh, let's see what that does to us. Okay, focus camera. Poison Fog. Awesome. A waft of thick black cloud roils up from below and momentarily envelops the heroes. Every hero should make an immediate will roll, target number 10. Mm, come on. Or it will not activate in the coming turn. Okay, that's not that's not the worst ever. So we're going to start off with our ranger. He has a will of plus four, so he just needs to roll a six. So naturally, he rolls a 1, and that's why we brought his handy-dandy Hand of Fate reroll, because I need him to not miss an activation. Okay, there we go. That becomes a 7 with his plus 4. That becomes an 11. So he he has passed. Now, Bryn, I believe, just has like a will of plus 1. And he uh, rolls a 2, so it, it doesn't matter. He's not going to be activating next turn. Uh, Damien, same deal. Will plus 1. Rolls a 2, and he's not activating either. Uh, Thaddeus the Crow, you have a will of plus zero, so show me that ten. Thaddeus rolls an eleven. He actually cranks it. He don't care about this poison fog. He's looking at you guys like, wow, what a bunch of wimps. Uh, Gwyneth, will of plus zero, rolls a thirteen. So, yeah, she also makes, man, the, I guess that makes sense. The people who are closest to getting the hell out of here are the least worried about this fog. They're just like, whatever, let's just get out of here. Archie, though, also has a will of plus zero and rolls a five, so he will not be activating. So the only people activating next turn are our ranger, our rogue, and our bird, uh, the original uh, three musketeers who started us off in the beginning anyways. Uh, I actually kind of like the symmetry of all that, but anyways, uh, that brings us to the end of this turn, or the end of turn four of a possible ten, uh, I don't think this is going to make it to the full 10. I think we might just get out of here before all that. But anyways, I will see you guys at the start of the next turn. All right, here we are at the top of turn five. Uh, this is going to be another really quick one because only three models can even activate. If you don't count the baddie who is hopefully about to die. So into the ranger phase, Tywin's going to activate. He's going to swing on this baddie. Pl fight plus four to fight plus nothing. 
Uh, and Tywin rolls a 19. He has been rolling hot this whole game, which means he's going to be absolute garbage the rest of this for the other two scenarios in this mission. But it does mean another dead fly. So there's that, I guess. Uh, and his second activation is just going to be to move. Uh, for the first inch or so, he's going to be half move for being in rough terrain. So, who? So, that actually brings his movement down to like a, roughly a five inches total. So, he's just going to get to about there with his movement. Uh, and that's his second action. He couldn't move again even if he wanted to. Uh, creature phase, Tywin just killed the last creature, so there is no creature phase. Companion phase, basically no one can activate. Uh, Thaddeus flies off the table. He makes it out of here alive, where I am not willing to play with his life. Uh, Gwyneth over here is going to move her seven inches, which is getting her pretty darn close to out of here. But not quite, and we're not going to risk it, so... She is going to just move up the seven inches there, and that brings us to the end of turn five. Really short one. Got this clip done in, in a minute and a half. But quick sweep of the board. Uh, nothing really going on. Two fly holes burning. And we come to our event card draw, which is going to be a red eight. Let's find out what the red eight does. So we place a giant fly on holes two. Two and three. Well, hole two is burning, so it can't have a fly placed on it. But hole three can. Bryn, buddy. <laughs> Whatever. We're gonna leave him. We're gonna leave Bryn to die. We we at this point just don't care enough about him <laughs> to come back and rescue him again. So that'll bring us to the end of turn five. I will see you guys at the start of the next turn. And here we are at the start of turn six of ten. And there's not a lot to be done. In the Ranger phase, only Tywin is going to be activating, seeing as he's not close enough to group activate with anyone. So he is going to be uh, making a move for it. Now, at the start of this game, I said he had some rope. I just checked. That was mistaken. I thought about giving him some rope, but I opted not to, which feels a little silly on my part now. But he is going to be moving his seven inches. Now, where the rope would have helped him with his climbing check if he moves again, he is going to go ahead and move again. Uh, he gets another three and a half, because on your second move, you have your movement. So it gets him almost up with Gwyneth. He is going to take a climb check, but I also checked. He has a climb skill of plus three. Oh, and he has a once-per-game ability called Focus. We're going to go ahead and pop that, which gives him a plus eight to once-per-game to a skill check. So he's just going to auto-pass that. Uh, that skill check for his climb. So yeah, he just automatically passes his climb check onto the creature phase where this creature is going to run forward and with its second action is going to get into combat with Bryn. Sucks to be him, I guess. Uh, but that is both of its actions. Into the companion phase, uh, real quick, we're just going to have Gwyneth get off the table because I don't want to risk anything happening to her. Uh, she is very nearly dead. Uh, Damien is, uh, he's gonna be a good dude and kind of come over here, make a double move to get into combat with the fly, uh, and then he's gonna have to make a check, and of course he fails and is gonna fall six inches, taking six points of damage. So he falls this away, six inches over the wall, tumbles down the cliff, and is down to six wounds. So he just cut his, cut his health in half. Awesome. Good job. Now Bryn has to activate all by his onesies. So Bryn is going to be fight plus one to the flies fight, fight plus zero. Um, okay, so this is a weird one. He has technically one because the fly rolled a one. But uh, he does a five. He ha Let's see. His fight plus one gets that to a five, so he does win. So he applies his plus two damage. Or no, he doesn't because he's using he's not using his crossbow, he's using his staff, so he does no damage. Which means he is just going to force the fly back an inch and expend his second action picking up the treasure token so that we will be getting that at the end of the game because I'm pretty sure the treasure token is like worth experience or it might be we roll on on a, on the table for a random item either way i think it's worth getting 
Uh, and then, oh, sorry, I th thought we were at the end, but we forgot to move Archibald. Uh, Archibald is just gonna move six inches up right here next to Tywin. And the three inches he has left won't get him off the table, so I'm not even gonna risk the climb check. Uh, and yeah, we're just gonna have Bryn stuck here with the fly. And then we come to the event phase again. So we draw another card, a red four. Red four says place a giant fly on hole number two. Hole two is burning, so the card has no effect. We finally catch a break, guys. <laughs> I, I say finally, we, we've been doing well all game. But that brings us to the end of turn four. One enemy to deal with. Our ranger about to make his getaway. Uh, I will see you guys at the start of the next turn. All right, here we are at the, at the start of turn seven. And uh, we're just going to come over here in the ranger phase. We're going to group activate with Tywin and Archie. They're both just going to move off the table, <laughs> leaving Damien and uh, uh, Bryn to their fate. We didn't like those guys much anyway. Uh, but coming over to the creature phase, the fly is just going to move back into combat with Bryn. And it's going to be, again, he, another clash of the wet noodles. Uh, Bryn fight plus one, fly fight plus zero. And somehow the fly managed to come out the better of it. Now Bryn has an armor of 11, so he's going to take six damage and be down to six wounds. But yeah, I swear to God, if you somehow screw this up. Uh, now Damien is just going to move three inches towards the pass, because he's decided he doesn't like Bryn that much after all. And he's not going to try for another... Uh, another climb. That's just not a good idea, with, considering how low on health he is. So, with that being said, it is now Bryn's turn to activate. He is going to try to fight his way out of this mess. Fight plus one to fight plus zero. And he finally gets it done. So he, that becomes a 17, goes down to back down to 16 for damage. Still more than enough to kill the fly. And then Bryn is just going to end up kind of like this. On back on the path, and hopefully he can get out of here in the next turn or two. Well, that brings us to the end of turn seven. We just got to flip our event card real quick. For the red seven, we place another giant fly on hole number three. Great, they're going to be chased on their way off the table. Fun stuff. Uh, okay, that brings us to the end of the turn. And I will see you guys at the start of the next one. And here we are at the start of turn eight. Sh this game should be wrapping up pretty quick. We've only got a possible two more turns after this one. And because there's no ranger on the table, we have no ranger phase. So we're just going to have this fly who has a total of 13 and a half inch move. Is just going to end up kind of chasing after Bryn. It's going to end up right there, not quite making it to him. Uh, and we go into companion phase, where Damien, once again, stuck off just off the pass, is going to move three inches and just barely get on the pass. And considering how wounded he is, I'm not willing to risk him. Uh, is he within six of the... Yeah, so next turn, he's just automatically off the table. I'm not going to risk it. Bryn, on the other hand, needs to beat feet. Uh, tell you what, he's actually going to... Try taking a point blank shot with his musket at that fly, see if he can't get him off his tail. So he's gonna be a shoot of plus two to fight of plus nothing. And it pays off! Uh, he cranks a 15, which is like the first time in three scenarios he's actually managed to shoot something. Uh, and But it's gonna be a one shot kill because his total is gonna be like 19, which super kills the fly. Uh, and then his second action is just going to be to move seven inches down the pass. Ending up something like that. And hopefully... Uh... Alright, so he's going to have to take a double move next turn, but that's okay. Uh, but that brings us to the end of our turn. We're going to do another card flip real quick. We have... A red three, what does that do? 
Red three, place one giant fly on hole one, except we can't because hole one is burning, so no effect. All right, guys, you got lucky. That brings us to the end of the turn. Uh, there's no enemies on the table, so we can just jump real quick into turn nine, finish this up pretty quick. Uh, Damien is within six of the table edge, so he just moves off the table. Uh, so he's going to get out of here okay. And uh, Bryn moves seven inches, doesn't quite get off, moves off again. So he's going to get off the table. Let's see if he... Unfortunately, if you move off the table, you can still potentially fail a climb check. So let's just see how he does there. He rolls a 16 on his climb check. He's fine. So we are all off the table. We have successfully made it off the table. We've burned two out of the three fly holes. Didn't quite feel like burning that last one. Just that felt like it would be pushing our luck. But with that being said, we've gotten the entire party successfully off across this narrow passageway down into the depths of the Shadow Deep and what terrible foes and fates await them in that mysterious and shrouded place, we can only find out. But we will talk about that a little more in the outro. So thank you so much for watching, guys. And there we have it. We have reached the end of Scenario 1 of Mission 3. Our Ranger Tywin and his merry band of helpers has made it successfully down the mountain pass. Now, I did end up missing out on a few things at the end of the scenario, but they didn't really seem enough to justify a whole other clip. Uh, I had to make a navigation roll to, to successfully map the stairs. I rolled a 16. You can believe me on that or, or not. <laughs> I rolled a 16. The stairs were successfully mapped. And I realized I never actually told you guys what the treasure marker we found was. Uh, I checked the book, and apparently there's no roll. It just turns out to be a love letter from a dead Laurentian soldier to his sweetheart. It's a nice memento, and it's worth, like, four experience... Or, no, sorry, it was worth eight experience points. Not uh, Like I said, didn't really feel like adding a whole clip to the video just for that. But, uh, the, so we have successfully completed this first scenario. Uh, the scenario does specify that all of our wounded companions go back up to full health for the next one. Uh, we did earn enough XP to level up our ranger. So Tywin is now at level four. He unlocked a new heroic ability. So I chose Frenzied Attack, which means that from now on, once per game, when he makes an attack roll, before he makes the before he actually rolls for it, he can add an additional plus five modifier. So he can now potentially just make himself fight plus nine once per game. So that uh, that could come in super handy. But again, the fact that you have to declare it before you roll means like you could declare it and then roll a one, or declare it and then roll a natural twenty, and it didn't really matter. But anyways, the. Uh, the leveling up was certainly appreciated, and uh, all of our companions got an additional progression point. Uh, a bunch of our companions are now at uh, a progression level of 5. They have to get to 10 before they actually unlock anything. So, yeah, companion progression and, like, leveling up takes a really long time. They have to not die for 10 scenarios in, uh, uh, total. So, that gets <laughs> it gets a little difficult to actually level them up to any meaningful degree. But anyways, that's uh, that's about it. Uh, I was surprised at how hot we rolled on this scenario. We blew right through those flies, although admittedly, the fact that they're all fight plus nothing probably helped us out there a bit. Uh, Archibald once again came in clutch with his with his magic spells. But other than that, yeah, we are on to the next scenario. That'll be up next Friday. If you've made it this far in the video, I do so appreciate you watching. Uh, watching this far in the video really, really helps the channel. Because it's not just the number of uh, views you get on a video, but how long you guys stick through really helps. So if you've made it this far, I really do appreciate it. Maybe if you could consider like liking this video, subscribing so you could get the next ones, or just go back and watch the other Rangers of Shadow Deep episodes I've put up. If you haven't watched them already, uh, they're a lot of fun. There's some there's some pretty wacky antics, particularly in the first couple of videos. Um, but yeah, with, with all that being said, I'm so glad you guys uh, tuned in for this for this one. Uh, I would love to hear your comments down below. What what have you been enjoying the campaign? What else would you like to see? Your thoughts on Rangers or just 
telling me all the things I'm sure I got wrong in this scenario. But uh, I would love to hear see you guys in the comments below. I would love to see you guys in the next video. But in the meantime, happy wargaming. Onward to glory!